How you going to get out? He sends the word of the Lord to the man of God. Then the man of God comes and instructs you what the word of the Lord says. And he breaks the word down to you and he tells you what to do. And so he tells them that you're going to go away. You follow the ark. Because you are, this is where you ain't never been before. We know when David was going and pursuing after his enemy, he told him, don't move until you see the rustling in the mulberry trees. Je Jesus told Nicodemus in John the third chapter, he said, the, the spirit is like a wind. It blows wherever it wants to. You don't know where it comes from or where it's going. And see, that's walking by faith. And it's last that you're going to walk in some paths and some ways that you ain't walked in before. And it's going to sound strange to you. But if it lines up with this word right here, you better get in it. Amen. Now what you going to think, what, what, what would you think when you, if God had sent you over here all the way, you one of the commanders over in, 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 in Syria and, and you got leprosy and God sends you over there and this man tells you to go out there and dip in the Jordan River seven times and you got leprosy and you're going to be healed. Well, you thought that man was crazy. <laughs> what if you dropped your axe head in there and a man went over there and throw some wood out there and the axe head did swim? <laughs> now, you wouldn't ever thought throwing that wood in there would have made that axe head swim. What if you were standing on the Red Sea down there and Pharaoh was behind you and you got mountains on every side and God told you to stretch forth that rod and then you all walk across on the pile of hand? You look around and I said, you must be crazy. <laughs> See, the things of the Spirit ain't going to make no sense to the flesh. Amen. To the flesh, man. Because God's ways are above your ways. And you're not never going to be able to figure Him out. Amen. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you is you've got to be listening for the Spirit. Amen. If when the Word says in Thessalonians that when He comes, it's going to be with a shout with the voice of an archangel. Amen. See, His sheep know His voice. Yeah. And a little they will not follow. But if you don't know his voice and ain't been listening for it, how you going to know it when he starts calling you? Mm -hmm. See, when you've been down here doing what you want to do all the time, and God's been calling you, calling you, calling you, and you just keep on ignoring him, one day you ain't going to hear his voice when he calls. Mm -hmm. You're going to be tuned it out. And everybody else is going to go up, and you're going to still be down here, because, see, you're going to be one of them foolish virgins that you all done ran out. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go into that tonight, do we? I'm sure I made everybody mad or somebody mad already anyway, so we just keep on going. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So just like they did when they came out, when they was getting ready for the death angel to pass over, they had to have the fe feast of unleavened bread. They had to get the, the leaven, the sin out of their life. And God is going to call you to sanctification to sanctify yourself. And we've talked about it before and we'll talk about it again. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, then you're going you to die in your sin. You're not getting in. Is that what he said? Amen. He said that that law wasn't going to pass away. Not one jot, not one tittle. Well, what you going to do? Because you ain't been able to keep the law. You know you can't keep it. You can't walk in it. How you going to do it? You have to walk by the Spirit, yeah. not by the flesh. Because yeah. you can keep it then. Yeah. The Spirit of God can keep it. He didn't tell you to be holy as He is holy if you couldn't do it. Amen. He didn't say without holiness no man will see God if you couldn't do it because wouldn't nobody see God if you couldn't do it. And so He's calling the church to sanctify itself. And I'm not talking about outward. I'm not talking about washing hands and wearing clothes and doing all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about get the inside of the cup clean and then the outside will be clean. Amen. And you, ain't, you don't have no excuse. Romans, the second chapter says that you either confirmed or condemned by your own heart. That what it says? It says he wrote, the, the Bible says he wrote the word on the flesh of tablets of your heart. So you don't have no excuse other than you just decided you want to do what you want to do above what God called you to do. So he's calling the people to sanctification. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, I, that as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. 
And thou shalt command the priest that the, to bear the ark of the covenant and say, When you are come to the brink of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Now, does everybody understand about what the ark of the covenant is? The ark of the covenant was a gold inlaid box, and it had an angel sitting on either side of it. And when they put it into the temple, God's presence would dwell in that place. And they would come in and they would splash the blood on it to cleanse seven times the blood of the Lamb. I want you to go back and study when you get a chance and look at, at John 14 and read that whole place. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house of men and men. Yeah. They ain't talking about heaven. I know we done preached it on and on and it's talking about heaven, but that ain't what it's talking about. You keep on reading and it's talking about giving the Spirit. And Jesus had to go into that heavenly place where the mercy seat was sitting. When he arose up from heaven, he told them not to be clinging to him because he had not yet arisen to his Father. And he had to go in that place and take his blood and clean the mercy seat so that it would be clean so that his Spirit could come back and dwell inside of you. Because what God has always wanted is to come down and tabernacle among men and dwell inside of you. And the Bible says that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you go back and read that and see what you see out of it. That's the way I read it. Of course, it can have dual means, and I'm not saying that God has not prepared you a place in heaven, but in the context of what he's talking about there, that's what he's talking about. And it even goes on in that same area, and he tells them over and over again about five or six times, if you keep my commandments, if you keep my commandments, if you keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments. I had never realized until here in the last four, five, six months of reading that word how many times Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, <laughs> then I'll do this. Amen. The things you get from God are conditional. I'm sorry. I, I know people have taught you on and on if that ain't so, but the grace is more than just unmerited favor. It gives you the power to walk in what God has called you to walk in. So the Ark of the Covenant is there, and so God's presence dwells in that place. And inside of it is the tablets that Moses got the law on. Aaron's rod that put it, and the pot of manna was in there. So we know that, that the, the, the Ten Commandments and the pot of manna, they represent the Word of God. Amen. And so God's presence is there. Right? Amen. And so that's God's Word, and that's God's Spirit. And so now they're going to get down here. And thou shalt command the priest that the bear the ark of the covenant say, When ye are come to the brink of the wall of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that you without fail, you will without fail drive out before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant, even the Lord of all the earth, passes over before you in the Jordan. Now therefore take ye twelve men out of the twelve tribes, out of every tribe of man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests buried the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were coming to the Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the Water, the Jordan overfloweth all its banks at all the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on the ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on the dry ground 